What's up, class? Hope you guys are doing okay. We're gonna start our video today by talking more about Marxist criminology. I'm outside in my backyard. I gotta hold the iPad because it's uh, a little windy. So hopefully this turns out all right. But I wanted to talk a little bit about contemporary Marxist theory. In uh, class last week, in the videos that I posted last week, we talked about the foundations of Marx's ideas and what Marx said on crime. And today we'll talk about how contemporary Marxist theorists have incorporated his ideas into criminological theory. So Willem Bonger is one of the first people that did this. And essentially what he did is he made a Marxist argument that the roots of capitalism were driving crime, much like Marx said that there are things inherent about a capitalist system that would increase criminal behavior, Bonger said that capitalism made people greedy and that that would make them look out for their individual interests over the collective needs of society and that could lead people to participate in criminal behavior. He pushed the idea a little bit further to say that behaviors that were found in lower class communities were more often to be criminalized because those that were in power, again using Marx's definition, those that owned the means of production, were able to create a system that criminalized the bad behaviors of lower class individuals while either legitimizing or not really taking seriously the bad behaviors of those that were in power. A good example of this is the kind of gambling uh, compared to playing the stock market. Um, historically, if you needed to take a little bit of money and turn it into a lot of money quickly, what you would do is you would gamble that money. So if you were poor and you needed your money to accrue in a quick amount of time or over time, you would go to a gambling parlor and you would spend that money. If you had money and you could wait for your money to accrue and to build, then you would invest it in stocks and bonds and mutual funds. Um, again, it's not a one-to-one -one comparison because gambling and playing the stock market isn't exactly the same. Uh, but there are people that gamble that have data houses and they bet on sports and they um, have databases that they're able to utilize to make educated guesses about over or unders or um, other uh, point spreads and things of that nature. And in you know, people playing the stocks, they have lots of data and statistics that they can make educated guesses about whether a company's profits are gonna go up or down. Um, one of those things is legal and the other one isn't. Uh, in most places. So Bonger might point to that as an example. Um, contemporary Marxist theorists as we sit here today in 2020 would study something called the political economy. What the political economy is, and this stretches across not just criminology but other social and behavioral sciences, it is the application of economic theory to making decisions that aren't inherently economic. A good example of that within criminology would be something like private prisons. It is not, it should not, some would argue, be an economic decision about how, where we house prisoners and what rights they should be afforded, um, what their quality of life should or shouldn't be. That should be based on legal decisions or humanistic principles. But private prisons are a good example of economic theory driving that decision. Um, people looking to save money have uh, invested in or paid private companies to come in and staff prisons and house prisons and take care of prisoners. Um, there's an awful lot of debate about whether that is economically uh, wise at all, whether they actually save money or not, but the decision is based on economic principles. Um, so it's a pretty good example of political economy within the world of criminal justice. And so modern contemporary Marxists uh, criminologists will oftentimes look at systems and see how powerful people, those that have the ownership of the means of production, they have money, are able to create systems that benefit them. And they'll also look at to see how economic theory influences criminal justice decisions. And those both have their foundations in Karl Marx's early works. And they're happening today. Uh, those uh, those ideas are circulating today in the world of criminology. So hopefully that clarifies a couple of those points at the end of the Marxist criminology section of chapter 12. 